In this example, we have a set of four equations that describe the behavior of a spacecraft. We are interested in representing these equations in the form of a block diagram. I have the first two equations here in the frequency domain already. You'll notice the double derivative replaced by s squared, the first derivative by s. So all these p's are also function of s. And I have the second and third, uh, the third and fourth equation is still in the time domain, as you can see. Uh, because of that dot. If you're interested in writing these equations in a block diagram, we need to first identify the input and the output of the system and the internal variables that will constitute the flow between the input and the output. We know from the problem that R of S is the desired position. We know that a P of S is the current position. If R is the desired position, that is the input to the system, and P is therefore the output. We have two internal variables described by equations 3 and 4, and we have a whole transfer function here that relates P and theta, where P again is the current position, and theta is a motor position internal variable to the system. We notice our input showing up here. We could start the block diagram there by representing the input R of S. By looking at equation two, if we subtract P of S, the current position from R of S, that gives V1, V1 being the amplifier input voltage. So R of S, the input minus P of S, current position, desired and current position equals to v1 so the output of this sum here is v1 of s so this now represents equation two we'll find p of s later what do we do now well now the output here is v1 v1 appears in equation four if we multiply v1 by eight that gives us v2 which is the output voltage. So you have the input voltage, output voltage, and this is a gain. By multiplying V1 by eight, we get V2 of S. Following the same process, now V2 shows up in equation three. Theta dot is the, if this is the motor position, theta dot is the motor speed. So the motor speed is a function of the amplifier output. If you now multiply V2 by 0 0.5, the output of this is theta dot. Theta dot in the frequency domain is S theta of S. So the output here is S times theta of s, or the derivative of theta. If you integrate this equation, this equation that is, we multiply this variable by one over s, which represents the integral in the frequency domain, this gives theta of s. So now this whole thing represents equation three. Theta of s, now, can be related to P through this equation, and P is what we need here. So if you take the first equation, we can factor P from the right side. We get P S squared plus 2S plus 4, and this is equal to theta. So P, is P of S, of course, is equal to theta of S divided by S squared plus 2S plus 4. We have theta of s here. If we now multiply theta of s by 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 4, we get p of s. And p of s is the original input to the system there. We can now connect them. And this closes the loop.
What is the transfer function P over R? Well, P over R is this main function, let's call that a main function A, divided by, because of this negative feedback loop, A plus 1. So P of S divided by R of S is, the multiplication here gives 4 over S squared s uh, squared plus 2s plus 4 all times s and this is the line function and be because the feedback loop now we have 1 plus that same function plus again because of the negative sign here so 1 plus 4 over multiplying this out s to the power of 3 plus 2s squared plus 4s and also expand this one s3 plus 2s squared plus 4s divided by now finding a common denominator here the common denominator is again s3 plus 2s squared plus 4s this multiplied by 1 is itself and plus 4 we notice now that this denominator cancels that denominator and the final transfer function P of S over R of S is simply 4 over S to the power of 3 plus 2S squared plus 4S plus 4.